Alright guys, I just want to show you uh, everything you need to do this guy. So I recommend getting everything on jacks, getting a jack and a piece of wood and supporting the transmission like that. And then you got a 17 millimeter bolt right there and right there. And you get two 14 millimeter bolts right there. And then two back there. So you can see them. And there's some more back there. And then there's two nuts holding the bracket, which there's the bracket. There's the bracket. Two nuts holding the bracket to the mount itself. And then you got four 14 millimeter bolts right there. And then you just take everything off, bolt the new one back up, bolt everything back up, and then drop the jack and you're done. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Let's get it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Finally start this video today because we are doing pistons. Real important stuff now. Um, I went ahead and did piston number one already. Um, I already effed up the first set of uh, rings, um, so have to order some new ones. Um, it's oversized. Both of these probably by like five thou. So they're sitting at 0 0.025. And the top needs to be 0 0.02 and the bottom needs to be 0 0.022 is what I'm targeting for. Um, according to the recommended guidelines from, oh, right here, from GE themselves, um, I was shooting just for the moderate turbo, street turbo, which is bore times uh, 5 thou, and bore times 55 thou, which got me to those numbers. So. That's how I did that math. Um, knocked out that guy. It took me probably an hour and a half or two hours since that was my very first, uh, assembling my very first piston for the very first time. Now I got the hang of it. So we'll try and knock out uh, three and two tonight. And then I would have to wait for uh, the other order of those guys. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get to it. Um, but yeah, if you guys don't know how to do this, you just get your measurements and you get your, your feeler gauges and then you take, you normally want to start with the silver one. Is this the silver one? No, it's a dark one. Silver one, uh, which is the top one. And you look for the number or a dot, which right there, you see that number right there N 25. Um, you get some engine assembly lube, you lube up the bore, and then you stick them in there. You crimp them down with just your hands, and then keeping them crimped, you try to get them level as possible, and then you stick the actual piston upside down in there to level out the ring. Um, and once it's level, you get your field gauge, you get your original uh, measurements, um, and then you grab the measurement you're actually shooting for, which is the 0.02 for me. Um, and you go here to the grinder um, and you make sure you grind into the diameter of the piston, not outside. Um, they have some guides here. And so how that look like, how I normally do it is I hold the left side's a lot easier because I can just like balance it like right here and just like grind, 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 grind. Um, but then the, the number side is what's hard. So I normally just like flip around the number side and just like hold it right there like that again. And you grind into the, into the piston ring. And then I normally hold it up like this and pinch them together to make sure they are like flush with each other and they're not nothing. There's no gap between that um, to make sure they're like parallel. Probably should hold it that way. 
um, to make sure that they're parallel, parallel and level is what the instructions said. So it's that whole process of keeping on grinding back to the, the bore, grind, bore, grind, bore, and all that stuff. So yeah, let's uh, see how long piston number three takes. Um, as you see, the pistons are labeled. I labeled number three, but all it says is right and then points to the front where it's going like that. So it's going to sit like that and exhaust at the bottom. And so there's just two of these and then two of the lefts and then you, you mark whichever ones you're going to use for. Alright guys, um, I screwed these ones up too, so, yeah, awesome. Um, the top one's at 22, which needs to be at 20, and the bottom one's at like probably 26, which it needs to be at, uh, 22, so, probably half a thou over on the bottom and then two thou over on the top so it's stupid Ugh. i thought i could get like a rotation system down with this grinder so i was going by like full rotations but that didn't work obviously so uh um i just want to show you guys how how i was putting these uh oil control rings on um, I started with the, the top one. Oh, these are two bottoms. Um, so you get a, uh, a top one that doesn't have a tab. If you notice. The tab, you can barely see it, the tab right there. Um, the tab is the bottom one, and so I just do it one by one, and then, uh, and then you get this guy, which is the control ring itself, and these are the oil control rails, is what the oil ones are called. So I put the top one on first, make sure that's seated well, and I slide. Making sure it's not going to overlap. We'll do something stupid like that. Why are you being stupid? So, if you guys are doing this yourself, you guys are just going to have to like play with this a lot. Um, it's really finicky. To get these guys on there. I might just not because <sighs> I have to redo the rings anyway. Alright, I finally got it in there. So, like I said, it's just, just gonna have to take some finagling. What I did is, since, oh, see, this middle one keeps not seating correctly. There's a, a specific orientation for where, oh, and this one keeps popping out. And that one popped out. To where like the gaps in the, in the rings have to sit, so. Just gotta be well aware of that. Um, but what, what I did with this one is I took the bottom ring out since nothing was seating correctly and I made sure just the top and the middle was, was seated and then once those popped in I just popped the, the other one. Alright guys that's gonna wrap it up for tonight.
I will continue this video tomorrow um, since it's Memorial Day weekend already. Um, and I get work off. I had work off today for different reasons, but I got next four days off, so I'm be pushing really hard for this guy next four days. Um, just want to update you. I dropped off. You guys haven't noticed, it's kind of empty, a little bit tiny bit. I dropped off the heads and the uh, half of the piston rods um, to machine shop today. Um, and I thought they were just going to do, like when they say valve job, I thought it's just like the valves and not the springs or something. Then they called me back like, hey, like where's the springs and the buckets and stuff? And I'm like, oh, snap. So I'm going to bring these guys. Um, and the wrist pin, because I need the wrist pin for the those bushings. To them tomorrow, I think they'll, it should be open. Um, I do have to tell them I am short one retainer. I'm still searching for it. Um, so I might have to do valve lash on that one guy. Um, but yeah, everything's at the machine shop. They said they're going to knock it out next week. So, boom, hopefully by next Friday or the Monday after, I can have everything back. Um, and then once I get everything back, I, 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 I hope they knock out the, the piston rods first or the rods first so I can get them back and get the short block assembled. Um, oh, I won't be able to do that because I'm still waiting on that one little rod bolt rod bolt um because one of them one of these ones is out of spec um for initial measurements um kept throwing everything off so i'm waiting on that one rod bolt so i need the rods back and that one rod bolt and i'm waiting on the journal bearings the journal bearings still have not arrived um, but i did get the uh standard x uh rod bearings um I'm gonna show you guys everything I got. I got those rod bearings. There are things I have to return, or possibly return. Prematurely got the head gaskets, assuming the deck clearance is going to be at four thou, and so these are uh, 0.78 millimeters. I'm pretty sure that's standard, but they're RCM head gaskets, so really nice. Um, I got this really awesome thing. 11 millimeter modified RCM oil pump. Um, and then I realized I have to return this guy, which is RCM oil baff oil pan baffle. Um, I forgot to take it out of my cart when I ordered it, which is my fault because I did talk I did talk to flat iron irons tuning before and they're like yes this would not work with killer b pickup just oem pickup so yeah unless i get the killer b modified to fit in these two holes which i'm thinking about so I, that would be ideal if i get the best of both worlds with the, the killer b pickup which is really uh fast and then this rcm baffle guy for sump control or oil starvation control that would be sweet so there's a, a fabrication guy that lives in my neighborhood and so i was gonna go and ask him because i need to ask him about the exhaust anyway and see if he can fab one of those um i did I did, I don't know where this is. I don't know where it went. It's the, uh, the fuel pressure regulator gauge. It's just the gauge. <laughs> so I thought it came with the, uh, the adapter and the 90 degrees, but it didn't. So I got over that. This is RCM thermostat. And then this is RCM thermostat housing, the black one. And then this is just uh, heat wrap for the 
the headers. So, yeah, got all of that in. Still have to figure a lot of things out though, but things are speeding up, like I told you guys. Um, it's just I keep making little mistakes here and there that are costing me money, pretty much. Um, like these guys, I'm gonna have to order new piston rings. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome back. As you can guess, it's not tomorrow. <laughs> it's like three days later. Um, I just wanna cap off this video. Um, I'm working to get the other videos uploaded. So this would be like two or three, I think, whatever. Anyway, um, I wanted to show you guys this. If you guys follow my Instagram, you guys have seen this already, maybe a couple days before this video. Um, but I got this all mocked up on the inside. I was not expecting this. I have the winded, the Killer Bee windage tray um, linked into the uh, RCM baffle. Um, on the next video, I'll, I'll tear it back down because I got to split the block again. Um, to get ready to get the new journals that are coming in, um, get those in, and then to mock up the crankshaft, and then as soon as I get the rods back from the machine shop, I can pop those babies right in there. But yeah, as soon as I get the rods back, I can do final assembly on this guy. Um, but as I said on Instagram and in the last clip, I have to, I'm not modifying this. That would be bad juju. Um, I'm going to modify the baffle itself because it's a lot easier. I, all you have to do is like cut out like a quarter inch on each side. So the side side rails can just drop in um, and they screw into the windage tray and goes through the RCM baffle which is so sick I did not expect that major perk so stoked right now so yeah that's gonna wrap up for this video if you guys are enjoying the build enjoying how everything's finally speeding up coming together drop a like subscribe to the channel subscribe to Instagram follow me on Instagram and we'll see you guys on the next one